got a button. I super glued a bolt to the button to make it a little easier to find. It's got a little LED indicator that tells you which computer you're attached to. Four channels. It's pretty helpful. But you might hear that, like, that noise when I'm fumbling with this thing. I, I can't stand it. It's like one of the worst parts about my current streaming ergonomics. So I would like to modify it so that I can have four separate buttons at the very least. So all those switch chips are the same. U3, U2, U1. ST, STM8. Oh, and it's got an unused IR input. Each of these little chips can switch one USB connection, so a twisted pair, between one of two different destinations. And then they have three of those chips forming a little binary tree. You see that? The button debouncing on this is very unreliable. Okay. Oh, Series 39. Huh, that looks like it. So it's, it's like Charlie Plexing, where you're dealing with the current paths that result from three wires. I'm using four of those current paths for LEDs. It would be pretty straightforward here to just put one switch there, one switch there. Now you've got four LEDs and two switches, but I want two more switches. So my thought here is one diode, but maybe two different switches. One acts like a short circuit. One starts out acting like a short circuit, and then this capacitor charges up and it starts acting like a voltage source. These two RC networks can actually be shared here, and that's what I've got on my breadboard. One resistor, one capacitor, two signal diodes, four LEDs, and then four buttons. Does it have like serial debug output? Like I wonder if this was a video switcher for firmware that they just modified into a USB switcher. This, is, this starts to be where you want like an interactive disassembler, right? So like we don't know, you know, maybe the data is intermixed with the code, maybe it's before, maybe it's after. In this case, it looks like we've got a vector table Maybe this is startup code, and then a data segment, and then probably application code. The first jump target we see here is probably the entry point or like startup code here. Yep, right after the data segment. Oh, that looks pretty printf-like. That would have been a printf in the debug build, but they stubbed it out right here. Oh well. I'm guessing that's the infrared. It's I2. Oh, I2C! 
What are they doing with I2C? They reused these pins for just plain old selector outputs, so I'm guessing this is all dead code. 2015, May. This might be the command buffer. This is like right after that interrupt answer. IR poll. And what is this check ID stuff? I don't see those strings either. This might just be a really messy, hacked up piece of code that has a bunch of stuff that isn't used anymore. I've probably already put more time into looking at this firmware than they spent actually writing it. So I don't know if these R commands actually do anything though. I think that might be vestigial. Like it looks like this code that does the print is where you would put the body of the function. Not a lot of features in this firmware. <laughs> Let's see if we can link an LED. So the LED for channel zero is this one. We need CR1 high and CR2 low and DDR high. significant bit is port 20, set channel, which sets the LED and the USB channels. There it is. Yep, that's computer number two. Well, that checks out. So I'm now cycling through all four USB channels with the LEDs in sync, and it seems to be working. It's just kind of bare metal C code written for SDCC. We've got some GPIOs and some pin definitions, some arbitrary delays some low-level GPIO functions. We have a couple of functions that know how to change the current USB switcher channel by setting the current LED and setting the current USB multiplexer setting. And then the rest of this is responsible for repeatedly scanning the buttons and updating the LEDs on the remote unit here. Seems better. Okay. So that's the first button, and that's the second button. This looks good on the scope. Okay. Oh, I think that's working. Check this out. This feels good so far. Okay. So you can see that flickering there. We could add additional clamping diodes. We could use 3.3 volt logic. We could use higher voltage LEDs. Any of those would solve the glitches we're seeing here. The current that we're using to charge the capacitor is also lighting two of those LEDs because the LEDs are in series across that same current path. Oh yeah, with white LEDs, it's totally fine.
There we go. Nice and booped up. So we got our extra socket, new firmware. This feels better on the original button too. I can switch computers and go to the stream machine if I need to fuss with the camera settings. I can go to the Mac when we're over there. And then there's the chat machine over here and the Windows machine. All right, this is what we're building. Not the keyboard, I've already got the keyboard. This thing. Top side, fresh off the mill. Flexing.
glossy smooth. Surface finish is great, that's like the best yet. lighter than when I started.
base. Circuit board. Follows me around now. Keeps the button pad in an easy to find location. 